Hey guys, welcome back to Through the Window podcast. You're joined with hosts Ben Lawton and me, Dan. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We've just had the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Max Berem on today, talking about his career in film, his degree, his freelance, and his move and transition into the home that we call Otter. You're going to find this podcast quite interesting. It's quite a, it's a, quite a bit of a, you know, a relaxed starter. But towards the end, we get a little bit more excited, and um, yeah, we all start to show our true colours, don't we, Joss? Oh yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen at home, I want you all to just to take a seat, take a big deep breath, and relax. I don't know where I was going with that. That's no, good. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. Is this the third episode? Are we releasing it in numerical order of how we've recorded it? I'm guessing we are. It's Maybe. one to three. Somewhere in there. It's All right. There. Welcome to one to three of the podcasts. This is our special podcast because we've got a special guest, none other than Mr. Max Bearham. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. <laughs> uh, who are you? Tell My me name. where is you, where are you from? What's your name? And what's your story, please? <laughs> <laughs> good day. <laughs> Such a good intro. There's going to be a lot of laughing in this podcast, I can tell already. Uh, my name is Max Barham. I am the fourth otter. I'm from Reading. And yeah, I'm sure we'll go into my story. I am the intern here, hoping to get paid one day, but we are working on it. Aren't we all? Yeah. Reading. So you're from Reading? Yes. Have you ever been to the Majeski Stadium? Yes. It's I used to go stadium. quite a lot. It's a good stadium. It's a good stadium, yeah. I haven't seen, I've only seen Reading play once. I'm not that big a football fan, uh, but uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What What have you got on your wrists? On my wrists, I have an Apple Watch and a Whoop strap because I pretend to be into fitness. And You're double fitnessed up with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I bought the Whoop strap because I wanted to track my sleep because I don't sleep very well. Um, and turns out it just told me that I don't sleep very well. So oh. it's good. Good. Good use of money, that. So you've been diagnosed, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's just confirmed everything I, I already knew for £30 a month, so good. Did you change anything once you've been told you don't sleep very well? Did you change anything or try and make it better? Or did you just like acknowledge that you don't sleep well, so that's it? I tried to change things. I tried to start going to bed at like 9, but you know, finishing work and then got to drive home. It takes like an hour to get home and then you got to eat and then it will, then I got to train, then I got to eat. And then by the time I get home and I'm actually ready to just chill, it's like half nine, 10. So just and you're pretty really wide happen. from the gym. Exactly. So yeah, not so ideal. Do you think the early nights are still not working? Maybe it's something else. Have yeah. You tried I'm, a memory foam pillow. I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, <laughs> Is the window open? <clears throat> yes. And the fans on. <laughs> But we need a mattress endorsement, Ben. You, can you sort that out, please? I'll try my best. That'd be yeah. so good. Simba. No, I'm going to try and uh, slowly work on um, being hard enough to go to the gym before work, like you. But in the morning, it will be good. Yeah. And then you get I'm tired not, at I'm night not time. Really a, not really a morning person. I get tired at night time anyway. That's strange. Oh. Do you sleep well? Yeah, amazingly well. Yeah, like yeah. a log. Yeah. I slept really well last night. Did you? Yeah. Oh, actually. <laughs> this is pretty funny go on uh, we were asleep last night and um, we, have the win- we have the I was in bed no, not with bed. bed no no uh, me and Hannah and we have the windows <laughs> open and we've got a little blind that sits within the kind of uh, window cove thing um, and it flaps about when it's a bit windy so we put Hannah's got this huge box of like products makeup and all that so we put the huge box in front of the blind so it holds the blind so it doesn't flap as much middle of the night the fucking box just flew off the windowsill <sighs> crashed on the floor the biggest bang. I would shit my oh, I pants. I shit myself, yeah. What Hannah time would, do you reckon? Like mid-morning, something uh, like No, it's like bang on 12 o'clock. Oh. Um, so I think what happened is the, the blind just kept tapping it over and over and over. It just fell off the ledge. Big bang. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I woke up to that. What did you do? Just like, whoa. Uh, rolled over. It was like, <laughs> whoa, <nice guy. laughs> what was that? <laughs> and um, yeah, she went back to sleep. What did Hannah do? She, she was more scared than I was. So yes, yeah, so I think she's still suffering a bit of PTSD from that. Stella? Stella's downstairs. She's probably a bit confused, but, well, you know, she's just a dog, so... God dog right. Stella. Yeah. I thought I'd let you know that. That's good. I had, the, I had it the other day with, uh, with Pog. That's oh, story yeah. I told you about. I was, I was half asleep at, like, 12 o'clock. And um, it's, like, a Thursday night, and Amber's phone rings. And she's like, oh, it's must be, it might be Pog. 
And I'm thinking, like, Pogger's got a fucking phone. What are you talking about? Yeah, how's he calling? And then it's like, oh, hi, it's Jason from, insert local pub name. Yeah, your cat's in our kitchen. And I think, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so I have to get dressed up, walk down to the pub, which is like 400 metres away. And he's in there, just walking about like he's a proper local. I have to pick him up and take him home. Now he can't go out at night anymore. Absolutely off his tits. Yeah. Insane cats. That's why you don't buy cats. <laughs> Because they just get pissed and go pub. There are a lot of positives. On a Thursday night. <laughs> there are positives. Get yeah, a job. Yeah. Animals, talk to me. What animals do you have? Do you have an animal? I have an animal. His name's Bailey. He's a small dachshund with long hair. Yeah. He's ginger. He's got an attitude problem because he's a small dog. Uh, and he thinks he's nails, but he's not. And any time a big dog comes up to him, he goes all guns blazing, starts barking, and then it comes up to him properly and he shits his pants. Fair a bit right. like me, really. Uh, so, yeah. The, the, fr- the, the phrase nails is something that you've brought to water. <laughs> yeah. Please expound on nails. So nails is a term that is used to describe someone that is hard. or So you'd say, oh, he's hard as nails. So it's, just, it's, re- it's really an efficiency thing because you cut the first bit out. So you just say, oh, he's nails. Nice. Is that a ready thing, do you think? Uh, probably not, I don't think. I don't know where it hailed from. It's something I just picked up over the years. Fair enough. I know a lot of nails blokes. Nice. Same. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, so, you went to university max yes what did you study and where did you study i studied media production at bournemouth university good yeah it was good i enjoyed my time there did you learn a lot a year not really okay um no uni was uni was good i think depending on what you're studying and depending on the sort of field you want to go into after uni um it's really good and it can really help people I think for me personally, I found that it helped me more in sort of the sort of character development sort of life rather than academically and educationally. I learned more through freelancing and actually doing what I wanted to go into um, than I did sort of studying and doing it in an academic sense. But in terms of, you know, learning how to live on my own and, mm-hmm. and learning how to cook. Life skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it does throw you in the deep end in that sense. If you could break down uni in the three years, so like the first year, what do you reckon they taught you? Was it just like framing, composition, stuff like that? or First year was... Um, first year was like sort of script writing and like very, very basic camera techniques. Um, literally like how to turn on a camera how to, what ISO is, what aperture is, all that kind of stuff. Um, Did they... And that carries on through the two, through the first two years, really. Was it exams on that? or was No. It, no. So it's all practical? Yeah, it's all practical. That's why I, I chose the course, right. because it was all doing, because I'm not academic in the slightest. Um, so it was all coursework, so they, they grade you on, okay, what film can you make? Um, as well as the dissertation and all the other uni shit that they do. But, yeah, the first two years is they're really trying to get you up to speed, because you get people... Like, for example, me who came into university after doing a year out and and I had a fair amount of freelancing experience under my belt when I started the course. And then there's other people there that have literally never touched a camera performance in their life and have absolutely zero experience. So they have to get everyone up to the a similar level. level or base knowledge. Mm. Um, so the first two years must have been pretty boring then. Well, so I did a year out, then I went and did a foundation course in media and photography and video at a different uni. Um, and that was all I was going to do. And then I was going to try and go and get a job. But then I found that after that course, I was like, oh, I want to go and continue this and surround myself with people that are way better than me so that it would almost bring me up even more. So I'd be more employable. And turns out that wasn't the case. But at the time, I thought that was what I'd do. Um, but yeah, the first two years, I was kind of like, I've just got to sort of just get my head down just get through it i know that i can do this stuff so i've got to focus really hard on the academic side of things so i almost sort of took some effort away from learning what iso and all that stuff is because i kind of knew that switched off in those lessons or didn't go to those lessons and spent that time learning about the academic side and how right how do i write an essay that can just get me through it i knew i wasn't going to get first in that stuff but i just thought i just want to get through it so that i can make the films and do the stuff that i know that i can do third year third year was the best year the hardest year by far but by far the best year because they take the reins off you so the first two years you're doing you get really shit briefs and like just stuff that you're not passionate about at all and you have to make it um and then third year obviously with the last two years they equip you with all the skills that you need to do it and then in the third year they just take the reins off and they say whatever you want to do 
as long as you can justify why you're doing it and that you're hitting a target audience that you have to identify you select your audience you select your medium um you can do whatever you want so i chose to do mine in at the time i was doing a lot of social campaigns for like influencers and and um social marketing kind of stuff so i decided to do a full scale social campaign i build the website do a podcast host a podcast uh photography video every, imagine like a full scale media campaign mm-hmm. plus all the business and and the behind the <coughs> behind the scenes because at the end of the day it's got to serve a purpose or t- to the brief it did um and i did that during covid lockdown which was quite difficult that's challenging yeah yeah it was difficult but it was really good because it was it was literally those two years it was literally just like i felt like a racehorse like in the gates like i had all these this yeah, stuff yeah. That i wanted to do and like all this i was like oh my god just let me do something and then everyone was like right lockdown you have to stay inside your room and i was like this is fucking brilliant because i can just sit in my room which i'd kitted out obviously as like a media studio yeah. yeah i kitted it out fully and i was like you're telling me that i get to sit in here and make shit all day for a year cool i'll do that no worries and i did it and it was it was a great year as long as i freelance or is it yeah awesome yeah well i think a lot of people did you get to use any of your freelance work as <coughs> academic work no no okay. i didn't um and they were quite this is partly why i didn't really like university that much um is because they preach about how they want to you know they're trying to kick you up so that you can go into the industry and you can go and make things and you're going to work for clients. But then they were quite, when I said, oh, I need some time off because I've got this big shoot that I don't want to pass up on because it could be a big opportunity, they weren't very accommodating and it was all quite difficult to na- uh, navigate. Um, but yeah, I had to, I had to really figure out how to run my freelancing business alongside university because I knew that I couldn't, drop it because if i dropped it then i'd come out of uni and i'd just be a student looking for a job my overall goal all throughout uni was to be employed or earning it the same amount as if i was employed as soon like before i graduate Mm -hmm. so that there is no gray area where i'm just sat at home playing call of duty wondering what i'm going to do with my life did did you ever find that on freelance that it was hard to yeah focus and actually get work done or uh, time or not play cards and stuff like that or? no no i've i've always been quite a well not always I'd, I'd say since leaving college um i've been quite a self-driven person i don't know if i if i want to do something or i know like especially if it's work related i'll go flat out <coughs> i'll go flat out at it um it was more i had to take myself away from freelance work so that i could do uni work because i was very much like oh yeah uni's fine like excuse me uni's fine that'll always be there i'm not really stressed about that i would rather focus on um freelancing and i think it took a bit of self-discipline to kind of be like all right i've got to put freelancing on the back burners for a bit because i have paid this money for this degree Mm. i kind of need to do this um if you go back would you still do the degree no you wouldn't well actually well it's difficult to say really because I don't know, maybe if I hadn't done the degree, maybe I wouldn't be as driven as I am now, or Mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't be as good, or I say as, yeah, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have the skills that I have now. Um, And I think it did a lot for me in terms of personal development, but academically and skills-wise, everything I learned was through freelancing YouTube and doing it. You can do, I've had a few people message me and a few people speak to me through their parents and speak to me through other people about like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a media degree, should I go and do it? I want to go into this, or I want to go into this, or I want to go into social media and photography. It's like, you want to go into social media and photography, go and do social media, go and take photos. And people are like, oh, unless you want to work on like, you know, ridiculous TV sets for like Channel 4, or you want to go and work as as a feature film camera op or something like that. Yes, depending on the uni you go to, you can get connections and they can get you in certain places. But if you want to go and make films just because you love making films, Mm or you want to go and be a photographer, then go and do it. How many people who finished the course with you do you think have actually gone into the industry? Do you know? I don't know, because I think I... I think I kind of disconnected myself from the course and my cohort, because my head was very much in freelancing, mm. and I was sort of... I always felt like I was kind of a uni student that didn't really go to uni. Yeah. Um, I did not care about going out partying and 
you know, obviously I did that because it's part of the uni culture, but I, I just wasn't fussed about that. Like, if there was a shoot on the next day, I wouldn't go out because I'd rather get my kit re- prepped and get everything ready so I can go and smash that gig so that then they'll hire me again or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, but I think a lot of people are finding it difficult, obviously, with COVID and everything like that. Students are finding it so hard anyway. Um, but I think the majority of my year, I, think, I know quite a few people that have managed to get jobs in sort of little production companies and and um, in marketing, because marketing is such a massive industry. Yeah. And media and marketing kind of go hand in hand now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of TV production people manage to get jobs because TV is just such a massive industry because it's all some of it's moving online, all that kind of thing. You'd have to move to London, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Nearly all the people that I went to uni with will or already have ended up in London. And you said that you, when you started uni, they taught you Aperture and the basics and stuff like that. And you already knew it. Mm. How come you knew it already? Were you already freelancing then when you were like yeah. 17, 18, 19? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been freelancing, obviously not to the same scale and not to the same extent. And I definitely wasn't charging the same. Um, so tell, me, tell us about your first ever gig. My first ever paid gig. gig. Oh, God. Uh, How old were you? What did you shoot my on? First, my, my absolute first ever gig was for my friend. And he was a, it was Jack Knight. Jack, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Um, He was a sprinter or hurdler, athlete man. Uh, He'll kill me for not knowing what he did, but yeah. Um, And he wanted some pictures. So we must have been 13, 14. He was like, oh yeah, come to my training session. So I came to his training session. He paid me five pounds to do two hours of photos, which thinking back on it now was insane. Oh my God. Um, they're still paid. I, was 13 gig, I remember getting the text, being like, "Oh my fucking god, this guy wants to pay me to take pictures. I'll do it for free, like, yeah. not even an issue." Um, I remember him being like, "Oh, I hope you don't mind, but like, I can give you five pound for it." I was like, "Yeah, fucking <laughs> yes, come, we'll do that." Um, but yeah, yeah, no, that was my first first gig, and then it kind of escalated from there, doing loads of different. Uh, things I think for the first sort of six seven years was it was really just shoot anything and everything. If someone asks you for a photo shoot, doesn't matter what it is, just like yeah, fuck it, I'll give it a go. Was there anything that was really difficult over that time? Was there a job that you remember that you were like bloody? Hell, I was glad that finished. I did a I did a promo video for the Law Society at BU because it was BU a, uh, born of uni. Okay, um, as a friend of a friend who who knew that I done video stuff and at the time i was shooting on a canon 550d which if anyone knows that camera they'll know that it does not shoot video very well at all um and i didn't want to rent a camera or anything because i was like oh the budget's not that big it was like 50 quid or something like that and i obviously uni student at the time i was like yeah fuck it 50 quid yeah i mean that'll pay for food for a bit um and i went i didn't have autofocus i was shooting on a little 20 pound like uh you know the the shit carbon steady cam thing yeah. um and yeah i was shooting on that and it was just oh, it was such a bad like the it was really really dark and the camera is so shit and my battery died 20 minutes in even though i charged it up 100 percent over x time so i had to run back there was like a little interval bit where everyone was just chilling out while the event started and i bolted back to my flat sat with my battery on charge for about 20 minutes and then fucking sprint it. Bearing in mind, I was in a suit because this was like a law ball. Wow. I was like, yeah, you have to dress up. So I ran in the pissing rain down oh, Bournemouth High Street with my camera half in my bag, half not, trying to get back to the event so that I could film the last half an hour of this event. And I did the edit and I sent it off and they fucking loved it. Really? And I just remember coming back being like, I remember I've, I've got a video on my phone somewhere of me snapchatting the snapchat video myself to the boys group chat being like i've just shot a video for the bournemouth law society and it was fucking wank <laughs> like this was the worst video i've ever made and they were really happy with it so i think i was definitely my own worst critic but yeah that was a it's funny that isn't it how you can judge yourself that hard on something oh yeah like... yeah Which, uh, i feel like when you know you know it'd be like a mechanic who knows that the car doesn't run a hundred percent but if i got in it and it was still fast i'm still gonna think it's fucking fast yeah um it's always it's always those jobs though that i think you've had a really bad day and then you get to the end of it and it's all right in the end you know like we've had that with the oink video where we went out and filmed and i finished that day and was like this is possibly the worst video i've ever <laughs> done in my life and you and i think ben was like pretty positive about it. he's like no mate it's all right it's all right everyone loved it we put it online everyone loved it and i was like what the hell like this is so it's shit weird, isn't what's it? what's wrong with people but, it's really cool when you think yeah, about it like, yeah we've done a video like that since no nah. 
But um, yeah, it was a Halloween video, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is mad. Like you've, I've had so many times. Like obviously, you know, every creative knows you come back from doing whatever it is you do, and there are so many times where you're like, why the fuck do I even bother? Like, why do I do this? I should just go and learn a trade or something, and I'll make so much more money, and it'll be consistent, and everyone needs me. Um, and then the people that you're do that you that commission the work or anything like that love it, and you're like, oh yeah. Okay, I'll do it for another week. Oh, okay, I'll do it for another month. I'll do it for another month, and then you never stop. But it's ridiculous just how critical you can be when it's something that you've made. It's weird. Mm. So transitioning from uni then, you started something. Grey Sky. Grey Sky. Tell us a bit about that. Who, what, what was the dynamic there? Who was the, who's, uh, the people? So myself, uh, a girl called Harriet, and a girl called Rachel, we started a company called Grey Sky, um, which was not a production company. Uh, it was targeted as a digital agency, so we were going to do sort of Facebook marketing, and we basically wanted to kind of bridge the gap between production companies and the sort of wanky social media agencies that you see now on popping up everywhere. Um, and we thought there was a gap in the market for people that wanted these Facebook campaigns and wanted these advertising things and didn't know how to run their own social media accounts, and people that needed production needed their content made for them so we the aim was to do it all in-house um and harriet handled you know all the organizational stuff all the business end uh rachel was our graphic designer and then i was the sort of video photo guy with a bit of business as well um and it went really well it we started it off the back of another job we had um which I won't go into too much, but that was for another production company, which ended quite badly um, whilst I was at university. And then, yeah, just whilst I was doing my, th- <coughs> whilst I was in my third year, uh, finishing up my grad project, they approached me with this idea to start this business. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Even though literally a month prior to that, I was like, I'm not doing any more freelancing. I'm not doing any more work. I'm just going to focus on uni because I need to get this degree. And a month later, I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's start a business because that's a good idea yeah. to do like, in Doesn't uni. Take much time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, did that flat out. Um, it was great. We worked on some really cool projects, worked on some really cool shoots. I learned a lot about business and about sort of navigating the, the sort of business world. And, yeah, I think it really it really helped me to grow as a creative as well, not as well as just a business person um but it ultimately came to an end when we kind of realized that it wasn't quite sustainable because obviously we were only i mean i'm 23 um rachel i think was 22 and harry was also 23 so i think we were very young especially to start a business where you know you're competing with you know you guys for one and other people that have been doing it for a while and are a lot more established and have the facilities and have the resource to do it um and i think we we kind of realized that in order for us to scale and in order for us to be successful we needed to bring people in that were a lot more knowledgeable because i can make a film i can take photos i can do a social plan i can do all that stuff all the production stuff what i don't know is how to scale a business which i feel like is something that you don't really know until you do it Mm. um and i think that was really our our demise you could argue that if we'd have stuck it out, maybe something would have changed. But I think after X years of freelancing and going through the shit and getting paid nothing to do weeks worth of work and after scrimping and saving all for a uni and not being able to afford anything, I think I was just ready for some stability and just ready to sort of jump into a company that would help me as much as I'd want to help them. It's quite it's quite impressive though that you did something like that so this was over covid too right yeah. so you kind of kicked it off during covid you're doing your last year of uni <laughs> you're doing it with two people that like you know but you don't know really you know they're not like your best friends or anything yeah. so you and you were all kind of remote working so you were doing it online yeah. during covid mm-hmm. after uni or during uni like hats off to you to actually take the bollocks to actually try something like that and give Cheers. it a go and I, it's nice to know that people, you know, I guess I'll leave in uni and want to try it and, yeah. you know, give it a pop. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought I was, I don't know, I got a lot of people, you know, messaging me, thinking I was not crazy, but like, you know, I used to get called boring all the time. I was known as the granddad of the flat because uh, I'd never come out because I was always working and I was 
kind of known as oh don't worry about max because he won't come like he's he's doing his thing um but i think a lot of people at uni are very sort of uh i don't know what the word is like tunnel vision almost like mm. they they see this is where i am now i'm at uni now short term so i'm gonna mm. fuck up the next two years or just completely like all the money i have i'm gonna blow it all and i'm gonna spend the next two years going out and getting absolutely pissed because it's fun now and then they come out of uni and they shit their pants because they don't know what to do because they don't know what I look back on their last two years at uni it's like oh what did you do at uni it's just like I don't know I got fucking absolutely fucked up all year for three <laughs> years yeah um, whereas I was very much the mindset of this is very temporary like A I've paid well I haven't paid the government has paid 50, 60 grand for me to do this so I can't fuck it up because there's actual money on the line um, and this is temporary in the next two years I'm out of here and then I've got to go and do something and I always had this thing where it's like I I don't care about making millions and millions and millions of pounds I just want to be able to go into a coffee shop and buy a coffee without worrying because that was like something that I always did or like if anyone was ever like oh let's go out for dinner or oh let's let's go and get a coffee I'd be like oh no I can't, I can't afford it I can't afford it because that 100 pounds 200 pounds that I did for that video a month ago is still funding my food mm. and shit like that at uni. So I always had that in the back of my mind when I was like, right, if anyone asked me to go out or something like that, I'd be like, if I go out, then I'm going to be hanging tomorrow, which means I'm not going to get as much work done, which means I might not put out that thing that that prospective client sees and that's enough to put Shem over the line to want to hire me. So don't get me wrong, like I went out a few, you know, every week, every other week, but my main goal was to sustain a living whilst I was there and then throughout afterwards. I can't remember what the question was. Grey sky. <laughs> <laughs> Went back to uni partying somehow, yeah. which I was all for. This is what I knew this was going to happen. I was just going to start waffling about shit that doesn't no, make right. any sense. Teach me back to our time at uni, Dan. Yeah, back in uni, back in the day. Scunthorpe, massive. It's big Scunthorpe uni, that one. Come on. Come on, mate. Yeah, so Grey sky. So you started it at arguably bad timing or good timing brave timing stupid timing whatever you want to call it pretty brave mm. how how did it how did it run how did it go was it was it, as you expected or it was better than i expected mm -hmm. it was a lot better than i expected so obviously coming from freelance i'm fully aware of how so unbelievably difficult it is to get clients when you're first starting out like you have to do everything for free and obviously having come from that i was in a position where i was charging for my work like quite a, a good amount um, you know, I had my day rate, I had my half day rate and everything like that. So then coming into Grey Sky, I was like, right, we like, if anything, my prices go up now because we're a business now. This isn't, I'm not just feeding myself. I've got, you know, if I charge 600 quid for a video, which is already a low price, that's not just going straight into my pocket. That's got to be put into the pool and then we've got to pay our expenses and all the other stuff. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, so yeah it was really really tough it was really tough but luckily we had some really great clients early on we managed to get some really good clients early on that led to a sort of snowballing effect um and we were targeted much more towards a, a demographic that wanted to stay i did not care about well I, not that i didn't care because that makes me sound a bit like a dick but i was focused more on retainers than i was one-off shoots mm -hmm. that's brilliant if you want to hire us for a one-off shoot but usually the people that wanted to hire us for one-off shit would be oh i've only got 50 pounds for this mm -hmm. which you know if you are an up-and-coming photographer or you're, or you're a videographer that's that's brilliant but if you're trying to run a business or pay a salary or pay a salary yeah 50 pound photo shoots here and there isn't helping anyone Unless it's just like waste. 50 a month yeah exactly yeah. exactly which with three people where one per the, sh the person that's shooting is just one person doing it and editing it's just not sustainable. So I wanted to put in all of the effort into getting retainers. And we got some really good retainers uh, off the bat. Um, and yeah, after a lot of grinding, a lot of hard work, we were getting in a position where it was growing. Um, and then I think we hit a bit of a speed bump. Um, you know, people were asking for things that kit-wise we couldn't really facilitate people asking for like drone stuff and things like that and i was like oh my god i'm gonna spend a wage on a drone. fucking drone that yeah. i'm gonna use for one shoot and mm -hmm. i was like this is where having the resource 
really comes in because obviously if we already had a drone or we had access to a drone then yeah that's fine we'll just charge you extra for this drone um and it's cost effective but for us we didn't have it so we'd have to get it in which cost more than she was actually willing to pay for the shoe so it's yeah i think we realized quite quickly that there's a lot you need to do there's a lot you need to have sussed before you start it takes time it does take a lot of time there's a lot of time and i think that's one thing that i mean i'm very very impatient so i think i was kind of like probably before it even started properly i was kind of like yeah i don't know about this like I was quite looking forward to going and getting a job that I feel like I'd worked so hard to try and get and to make myself look as attractive as possible. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I ultimately had the conversation uh, with Harry and Rachel. I was just like, I, I, I don't think this is right for us. I'm really glad we did it because it made me the creative that I am now and the and the, the mind that I am now. But I think, yeah, it wasn't something that was sustainable for us. You glad you tried it? Glad you gave it a 100%. go. Hundred yeah. percent. It's one of the best learning experiences ever. You don't know what you want to do until you do something that you don't want to do. Yeah. And I think. Yeah. Not that I didn't want to do that, but I think it took having, you know, clients that ask for stupid, stupid stuff for no money, um, and it took people taking the piss, and it took loads of meetings with people that were just wasting time and just wanted to take advantage of the three twenty-three year olds that started a business that haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing. Um to really understand how to read people and how to see when people are trying to take the piss. Um, and I think that helps a lot just with life in general. Um, and it also helped develop my video and photography stuff. And I learned a lot about that as well. So yeah, it was good. Sweet. And then tell us about your, uh, your transition to where you are today. Well, it was quite abrupt really, wasn't it? Um, I, the day that I kind of came to the epiphany, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of done with this now was the day that you guys posted, we're hiring that we're hiring post came up. Literally. I remember being like, <laughs> fuck grace, fuck this stuff. I can't be asked for this. Looked at my phone and I had a notification that Otterworks had posted. So I swiped on it and saw you were hiring and I was like, and obviously I'd already called you guys, uh, about, uh, working together before um sort of sort of trading clients kind of thing and yeah i just sent i think i sent you guys i sent it to otterworks or i called you up or called you i called someone um and then yeah had an interview and then a couple of days later i got the job offer I got the job offer while i was in the gym which was the gym where the gym owner was one of our old clients and i got the job offer in front of him and he was really excited. I remember being in the gym and that was one of the best sessions I've ever had. I lifted so much weight that day. <laughs> <laughs> what, were your, um, what were your perceptions of who we were before you joined? I like, had no... How do you remember how you found us or we found you? Or? It was through... Uh, it was through Polar, I think, because they were yeah. a handy-based business. Yeah. Um, and we were based pretty close to them. And then when they, we saw that you were doing stuff with them just clicked on your account was like oh my god these guys are sick followed you guys and um yeah i had no idea that you guys were as big as you are or like there was as much behind you guys because i think you guys were in the old office Mm. um and you still had the kit and stuff like that but i didn't realize the kind of vision that you guys had for otter or the scale that you guys were going for because obviously I, i saw you guys in the old office which was which was don't get me wrong was really nice but it was a bedroom though wasn't it yeah, oh, well, I, I mean, you compare the old space to this space, and this space dwarfs it. Yeah. Like, you could, you can see that through the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when I came in for the first, the, my first day, I was like, holy shit, this is, like, these guys are legit. Like, this is big. This is big shit. Not that I didn't think you guys were legit, but... Seeing it in person was different. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think it was really refreshing when, you know, we were having that conversation about sort of growth and, and, and sort of what we were both looking for. And I didn't think it would be the match that it was. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect to click instantly and to feel part of it so quickly. Um, I think when you go for new jobs, it takes a while to kind of settle in. And mm-hmm. I feel like there wasn't really that period. I kind of just Pretty started quick. and then it was, a, it was back to work. I think it helps that I came from a business where I was doing essentially the exact same thing to what I do here. Mm-hmm. Um, so that definitely helped the transition. But, you know this i said to you guys on the first day this is everything i wanted grace guy to be 
So I'm, and I said to you guys, I'm not really that precious about, you know, running my own business or, or, you know, Grace Guy failed and that's absolutely fine. I'm glad I did it, but I'm so glad that it did because it meant that I ended up here. Oh, nice. It's nice, Dan, isn't it? Nice, Dan, isn't it? Do you reckon we should hire him? <laughs> yeah. You've got the job. Can I get, <laughs> can I get, do I get paid now? Yeah. <laughs> what was the, um, what were, did you watch the vlogs and stuff before? Did you watch the yeah. vlogs and the, do you, this is a question that sometimes I think we're quite curious about is, do you think we're as, are we liking the vlogs as we are in real life? For the people out there listening. Ben is funnier. In real life? Yeah. Ben is funnier. Dan isn't as introverted. And Joss is a lot louder. Joss not, is possibly not, not the, in the vlog. Joss is very, very quiet on the vlog. So do you think Dan's more introverted on the vlog? Yes. You think? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Dan is fucking weird. <laughs> 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 That's a sniffer. Dan right is there. fucking weird and it's hilarious. <laughs> um, every, everyone is funnier and everyone is louder. I feel like when you put a camera in someone's face, I definitely get it a lot because I'm sure I'm completely different in person than you oh, translate on camera. You definitely have like the last leg of camera shy to overcome, I think. You've got like yeah. 5% less to fully be yourself. I think I, it's always been something that I've always, I think I've always struggled with is I always worry about what other people think of me. Yeah. It's, I've always had that. I'm the always. Same. And it's not until I've started hanging around with Ben, you know, and we started Otter. And he was like, mate, just don't give a shit what people yeah, think about yeah. you just be yourself and then it was for like ages wasn't it yeah. I was still like so like yeah. we go to networking events and I'd still be so quiet and like you know not very comfortable but I think now it's just like doing more of that being on camera more you just it, you set you yourself used to it it's fun mm. it's yeah. fun pointing a camera at yourself vlogging I love like that was one of the first things I was really excited about when coming into this company it was like oh my god I can do a vlog segment that's yeah. weird like, I can just pick up a camera right Max what are we doing today oh mm mental it's weirdly therapeutic i think vlogging. yeah yeah definitely especially when you if you get in the office and you're for some reason by yourself and you can do a piece of camera it's it's quite um it's quite nice to, yeah to, 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 to speak your mind or your heart to a lens like that but it, it's interesting how people come across on camera because i had a, a friend of mine um was asking me oh how's the new job and stuff like that and they were saying oh joss seems really quiet and i was like joss is fucking mental <laughs> <laughs> yes he is like, like joss says comes out with the weirdest shit in the office shit. but yeah. on camera he's so chill and just so calm and collected and he, i was like mate spend a day in the office with joss he came in the office earlier he walked through the studio came into the office and just pulled his top up and just slapped his belly <laughs> just looked me in bed in the eye slapped his stomach and walked to his desk it was like also what? let it <laughs> Let it be known, the clip of me bringing the camera in, in the last vlog, yeah. where I come through the door and I say, everyone, everyone stay calm, everyone stay calm. The scream, when I walk into the office, when I'm like running into the office, into the desks, that's Joss behind <laughs> really? the camera, screaming. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> so when everyone's like, oh yeah, Joss is so calm and collected, yeah. he's just so like, he's so chill. I'm like, no, he's fucking not. He's just playing up to the camera. He's like a so dysfunctional weird. teenager, Joss, isn't he? Yeah. But you've got to love him for it. Yeah. We do love Joss. It's... It- when you said about having that kind of heart to heart with the camera in in the vlogs and stuff, what's nice though is that you can have those things. Yet Joss doesn't take the piss like he can easily <laughs> take the piss in the edit and just oh like hold God. all the you know the yeah. outtakes. But hats off to Joss that he actually looks after us. In yeah, hundred so, percent. Just thank, to make us look like Joss. absolute tools. Yeah. There's a bit of a learning curve with me because obviously you got you guys have been vlogging for a while now, so I'm sure you're used to it in a sense. But I've never done it before. Excuse me and. I think there was a period where I was like, oh, God, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I hold the camera out and look at myself. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what do I say? And there were there have definitely been times where I've said something and then gone, just don't put that in this fucking around. <laughs> that's that's don't, common don't occurrence. Say that. The amount of times I've picked up a camera, like the 60, and then faced it on myself and pressed record, and I've just stared down the lens for like 40 <laughs> seconds and not said anything. I've, I've got nothing to say. Why am I vlogging? Josh, should we do, we should do a... Uh, like an outtake to the vlog, just just like a little compilation at the end of the year or something. Maybe just for the the hundredth vlog, Joss, we should have a like like we did for the fiftieth. Yeah. We made a collation of the past fifty. We could have a, a collation of the past one hundred. It should be a collation of the clips that didn't make the vlog. Yeah. Mm. So the, yeah, the or, Joss is nodding. No, I definitely don't do that. Or it will just be a ten minute segment of Ben staring blankly <laughs> into, <laughs> into the lens. Ten minutes of no talking. <laughs> the rest of every all of us just going. Don't put that bit in. Yeah, just don't, don't put that, that in. It's just, yeah. it's just those like breathing montages. Have you seen them? <laughs> <Yeah. It's> like, <laughs> I don't. Put, I don't put that in montage. Would be really funny, wouldn't it? Just like a clip with "Don't put that in, Joss," and then cut to the next one. We should send it to what's it, Shmo Yoho or something. Yeah, get them to like 
make a song out of it. Do you find it um, out of interest? Do you find it interesting to watch your week back on the vlog? Because I, I like to look back. I get home and I watch it with Amber because she. It's, it's a much easier way for me to explain what we've done that week. Yeah. Her to watch the vlog. Yeah. And it's really interesting for me to look back and think, oh yeah, Christ, they were in London, or oh, we did that, or oh God, that thing arrived. Because mm-hmm. like, you forget. Yeah. You just yeah. forget about everything that happens. And it's nice to watch the week back and think, fucking hell, that so much stuff happened. Well, I, this is going to sound really nerdy, but obviously taking delivery of the camera the other day like that was so exciting and i feel like you, you kind of lose that and then you go back and watch yourself have that those emotions again i'm like oh wow that's yeah, really yeah. cool um but no 100 percent. and it's it's one thing i've realized from doing that is that i've had a lot of texts from people being like what the fuck do you do at work <laughs> like you don't do anything you guys yeah. are just making loud noises and and slapping dogs with planks of wood <laughs> and, <laughs> like random shit yeah. and i was like no that's like that's like 10 minutes of our day yeah. just condensed into one. The rest of it is no one talking, us staring at screens, trying to figure out how to Photoshop videos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, It's funny that because we've had people who have like, I'm not going to name any names, but we've definitely had people who have said to us like, do you, what, what do you guys even do? Do you even do any work? Because they watch the vlog and it's like, yeah, man, like... What, what do you think we're doing for the other like the other yeah, times? It's yeah. not that like the vlog is forty hours long each week, and you can actually see what we've done. It's yeah. like so condensed, yeah. And it's only the best stuff that we actually show. Hundred percent. We can't just like the, the only boring stuff we show is like time lapses of us working. Yeah. But we're not going to like hello everyone uh, for the next three minutes. You're going to watch me color grade this clip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you know? that's one thing that I really enjoyed when I came in here was I didn't realize like obviously you know it takes a lot to start a business, and I think as someone that started a business, I can appreciate the level that you guys are at and how well you guys have done but when i came in and saw the behind the scenes saw the pre-pro saw the organization how you know it's fucking clockwork here Mm. um thanks mate which is it takes a long time to get to that point and to build a system like like listening to you talk about the nas (laughs) it's like oh my god if you ever want to win ben's heart (laughs) ask him about his nas (laughs) (laughs) he'll get a semi yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm that old guy at a party of like a like, like a vintage jag like and like please ask. He's got a picture of it on his phone. <laughs> I've got a couple of photos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but no the, the like to those people that sent me messages like how do they like how do you guys make money all you do is fuck about. It's like mate come come and look at Ben's whiteboard <laughs> and look at Dan's desk and tell me they don't make money cuz they're fucking working all the time. It's, and I think the entire whiteboard is just Dan's name. The amount of projects you guys have. It's definitely a thing, like you say, like, oh, for, you know, 5% of our day we're vlogging, we're being loud and obnoxious and chatting the camera, and for the for the rest of it, we're all just silent, just working our our places, just getting we shit done. We have good fun, though, don't we? The vlog is completely fake. It's all put on. <laughs> we actually hate... Max, everyone. pretend to be happy! <laughs> <laughs> pretend to be happy! Max is actually a bricklayer. <laughs> yeah. ben, Ben's a site manager, and me and Joss are labourers. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot of trial and error, like, getting processed, right? Like, I remember when we first started the company, I was doing fucking filming and editing. And, I mean, thank God for the brand that I moved away from that. Mm. And naturally and luckily fell into the role that I'm in now. And that's a role that I really enjoy. But that's luck, I think, that I ended up being really good and, and liking that. It's and kind it, of forced luck, wasn't it? Because it was like yeah. someone had to do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it just happened that I really enjoyed it. So it made so much sense. And then over time, we've just if we've made a mistake or something's happened wrong we thought okay right how do we stop this happening again what things do we put in place like you know with pre-production or having like um the the the, the whiteboard for example we used notion before but then the whiteboard's better because it's physical and everyone can see it and i think having that is is, is really nice because everyone kind of sees where everyone's at throughout the whole week yeah. we all know we've got what we got to get done by friday yeah. um and yeah, I guess the, the NAS is really nice because we will have access to the, the one giant hard drive. Yeah. Can, you show, can I see a picture of it? I'll, I'll can, can get Josh to put it in the vlog. Yeah. Send it. I'll put it Josh, could you pull up a DS1618 uh, Plus in Longy NAS on the screen, please? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't, please, Josh, don't. Good day, yeah. 1618 Plus. <laughs> For those at home who are only listening and not watching, it's, a, it's it, basically a black box. Um, a, uh, with that, and that is exciting as yeah. the whole thing is. That, what what does box. it look like? I'll, ex- I'll explain what this is, Dan. Here we go. This is a, six, green this is a six bay uh, LAN server, which you can put six drives into. We have six 10 terabytes in there on a RAID 5 system SHA2 uh, backup redundancy. And uh, yeah, it basically services us for our video needs. It's a hard um, drive. That, the, it's a giant hard drive that's, that's on the, the network. That's the second match of sixes we've had too, right? Yeah, we used to have six free terabytes up to 18 terabytes. How many terabytes have we got all together now? S- once the new hard drive 
once the because we will buy an extension for that so we can have our otter files on a separate NAS. Ooh. We'll have about 78 terabytes in the office. And then where else is that back up to? The Google Drive. Straight to Google Drive, mate. G Drive, where it's at. And so then all the important shoots, um, like National Trust and stuff, we back up into a cold storage as well. Which How goes home that? with us. How big is that? Oh, God. Two terabyte each? Yeah, they're normally two to four terabytes, yeah. But we only save the rushes. Fun fact, Grey Sky, the entire business was run off a one terabyte hard drive. That gives me anxiety. Yeah, the sh- one shit one terabyte out. hard drive that was attached to my computer. I remember multiple people being like, Max, what happens if that hard drive goes down? It's like, I don't have a job if that hard drive goes down. And they're like, are you not worried about that? I was like, no, nah, not really. You should be. Yeah, well, I had a case for it. So. We had two laces go within like two months. Two brand new laces. Yeah, so weird that. Sold by Apple, yeah. Shit, laces. Trying to get you to buy more, mate. Come on. Well, they did. They do they? look cute, though. Western yeah. Digital. WD, come WD. on, WD, goat, goat level hard drives. Um, Sorry, Ben. What's your, um, what's your plans for the future? And where would you like to be? I would like... As a designer. As a designer. No, sorry, as a creator. I'd like to learn how to be a designer. <laughs> I need to then, Photoshop like, videos. <laughs> <laughs> the day that I learn how to Photoshop videos, I'll be a very, very, very rich person. Yes. I'll be extremely in demand. Um, I broke on the software. Yeah. Uh, no, so the plan is really just to continue, hopefully, on the trajectory that, that I've been trying to get on for the last few years. Um, continue to grow, continue to learn as much as I possibly can. Um as I said, I after doing university and freelancing for close to ten years now, mm. um, I'm ready for just some stability. So it's really nice to feel like at home somewhere now. Uh, and I think I just want to yeah, just keep growing the business, grow within Otter. Hopefully, be at a point like I love what we do. I love making films. I love making videos. But I'd love to also move into a not a producer role but a more sort of overseeing mm-hmm. um sort of like directing on shoot and stuff like that um i've had a couple of times where i've been sort of quote unquote directing sort of uh camera ops and stuff like that and i've really enjoyed it so i think that would be something that i'd like to move get more into. hands on with that yeah yeah because i think you know being a camera ops brilliant and don't get me wrong i've loved every second of doing it but that can only take you so far so i think yeah, just learning basically where I can be of more use because I feel like there's a lot more to me than just a a photographer. Pretty face. Yeah. Mm, I thought that. I like you. to think so. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, how, how do you feel about coming in and using only Canon? There is a running joke in the office, if you haven't been able to tell from the vlogs, that I hate Canon, which is not true. I started... Don't say it on the podcast, mate. Do not say which camera you hate. Yes, don't you dare, don't you dare <laughs> no, I won't do that yet. We'll protect her at all costs. <laughs> no, I start, so I started shooting on Canon, and I was a massive Canon fanboy for ages, but I'm not very precious over um, like camera stuff. If there's a better camera out there, then I'll use it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at the time when I was looking to upgrade, Sony had the best bang for buck because the EOS R was so expensive, mm. um, and it didn't offer things that the Sony did. So I bought the Sony, which in hindsight was difficult because... Sony shooters have a certain rep and I think a lot of Sony shooters love their smoke grenade photography and their <laughs> LED masks shit and oh my god yeah um, so yeah I got a lot of stick but it did the job and it helps it does everything I needed it to do I could quote people for 4k films if they wanted slow motion I could do that as well um, so it helped me for cheaper than the EOS R at the time but now you know the R5 that you guys have is fucking ridiculous and yeah as long as I don't have to touch the fucking 6D, it's you absolutely fine. It, it's absolutely fine. The six, no. Is it nice to come in and get your hands on in the arsenal and like yeah, get into cool. play with the it's stuff? Cool. And, and I think to learn as many camera systems as you can is it's so beneficial. Because yeah. we might rock up to a shoot in the future and our camera goes down and they hand us an Ari mm-hmm. yeah. or something like that. I mean, the chance of you your cannon going down and getting handed an area pretty slim but <laughs> but i take it but if you, you know <laughs> worst case scenario if you have to use a camera that you're not used to you, you you need to know how to use it yeah so i think you know me coming in and learning the canon system completely because obviously the canon system now is completely different to what it was like when i was using it really yeah menu systems everything the, the whole i mean i was using like the 1100d or the 1000d whatever you guys had mine was like that so i mean you put an r5 next to that camera it's 
God tier. Different ball game. Yeah. Um, using cine cameras has been interesting. I thought it was going to be a massive learning curve. And to be fair, it, it has been a learning curve in some respects, but it's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, I feel like as long as you have that base knowledge, you can kind of get away with certain things. Um, but yeah, I want it known that I don't actually not like the 60. It's just they shoot it in auto. For the vlog. It's really vlog. difficult. I don't like shooting in auto. I sound like such a white... Anyway. He's going a bit too hard on like really, mate. Like, come on. The 60 is shit. Be our best here. No, I like it. It's all right. It feels like a brick, though. Like, I feel like I could throw it through a wall. That's why we love it. We've used it. I've dropped it on, yeah, I've dropped it on the floor many a times. Well, once. It dented. But like, it you could really hurt someone with that. It's a good self-defense weapon. Yeah. Have the, it on you. The R5 would crumble, I think. Yeah. It's a bit too pretty. Do you know what wouldn't crumble? Dan's Leica. True. That would not crumble. That is a brick. It is solid. Are you, do you feel any type of way about now being a, a Leica owner? Uh, I just feel like you know I have to put it in front of everything like it has to be on camera everywhere I go um, <laughs> called everyone up that I know just told everyone <laughs> that I've got one there's that TikTok you make, we should make a TikTok of you where like you you put the Leica lanyard on with the camera and you're like am I better than everyone that would be so good <laughs> we should definitely do that we should actually do that I was thinking it'd be pretty funny just to be like fully rigged up with like the R5 on one side like on the other, other. Yeah. yeah that's ridiculous overkill C70 on every it every aspiring like... photographer just cry yeah and like, oh you like cameras you want to buy that new camera well I've got <laughs> every new camera that you want come at me oh my god do you feel like you can get in anywhere now like you get backstage passes to literally any building that you go into yeah I should be able to I think if I was to get a backstage pass to any building here we go. Nat West. You imagine going behind the scenes at imagine going behind the scenes at Lidl. Imagine that. Like seeing Lidl. W- yeah, the middle at Lidl. You know the middle aisle at Lidl. Imagine seeing all of that stuff, Backstage but not in the middle of Lidl. The middle aisle at Lidl. Yeah. But you know, when when the store's shut, you get like exclusive access. I feel like you need to have bigger dreams. Though. My sister works there, mate. Get you in if you want. You reckon? What you've got to do is ask, yeah. All right. I might have to give that a go. All right. Um well, the name of the podcast is Through the Window Podcast. You can find it on Apple. Um, that's not a summary. Um, <laughs> uh, you can find it on Apple. It's a reference. Um, Max, I- I'm not sure you've prepped for this question. I haven't. But off the top of your head, can you think about a window that you've looked through that has made you happy? It's made you sad? It's memorable? Made you feel something? It's made you feel something. It's a window that has taken a part of you, but you've also taken a part of it. I've got two. Ooh, can I out. say two? Yeah. Oh, I haven't prepared. The You've first one is that window. Nice. Having been someone that's actually sat on that side of the the glass and looked through mm-hmm. onto the podcast guests so far, that's been really cool uh, to learn about them. But my real answer is probably the top of the rock in New York. They've got there's like when you get to the top, there's like big glass panes which are top of the rock, window. Rockefeller. Yeah, top of the Rockefeller. Ah. Uh, the Rockefeller building in New York. Um, yeah, when you get to the roof, you're like equal height to the Empire State, I think. Um, and there's like big, big glass windows, obviously, so no one falls over. Uh, but the view from up there is ridiculous and is one of the best places I've ever been. That sounds pretty cool. It's so cool. Do you know what? I, I mean, we've all looked for a lot of windows in our lives, right? Speak for yourself. Uh, do you think we should try and think of a new window? For, for, you know, like You tell me a window of yours, I'll tell you a window of mine on every different podcast. That'd be fun. And we have to talk about all the windows we've looked through. You make it sound like I've seen, I go for a lot of windows on a weekly basis, but really I think good it's podcast doable. content. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Tell me about a window you've looked through, please. Uh, my favourite one recently was when Joss came back from the shoot we had last week in the van yes and i was looking at him through the windscreen it's like yeah. wow joss is in our van proud dad moment parked up in front of the office and it was kind of cool to see you know it's nice not to be the one doing it it's nice to, the team are doing the stuff that we used to do it's kind of like nice to see the reins have been trickled down and that was kind of cool someone like cut that. that joss is in our van that's really nice thanks dan that's really good. Dan? You, uh, s- you sound angry like you were going to do that one. No, that's was, really great, Ben. I'm great. not angry that I didn't think about it because I remember seeing his face as well and being, being like, like yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. Dan was uh, about to hit you with the 6D. My, <laughs> my window, I, I, it was only until you just said about the Rockefeller uh, building. We, I went to Canada as a kid and we went up the, T, the CN Tower. CN Tower? Oh, wow. You know, Drake sat on top for his album cover. Oh, yeah. Did you sit on it? Views. Went up there. Uh, didn't sit on the CN Tower on the top. Oh, not like Drake. Drake did. Do you reckon he actually did that? Nah. No. Photoshop. Botched Photoshop job. Probably Photoshopped it in Premiere. Should have got me to um, it. Went up top of CN Tower. <laughs> 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 they've, got a, um, they've got a glass pane on the floor and you can walk on it. Wow. That's pretty cool. I would shoot so I a brick. I stood on top of glass looking down. Oh my and God. It was just like tiny people below. 
That's pretty cool. Window. People do tend to be. Oh, Windows brilliant. They are brilliant windows and mirrors. I think mirrors are <laughs> I wonderful. I'm, I think I'm becoming too attached to this. Like, that's good, mate. Yeah. Do you ever think Is about? Right? Do you think about how magical mirrors are? Like, you, they mirrors, can they yeah. can polish glass so it fully reflects. Can you imagine like the Is first? That what they do? I think so. But can you polish glass to, to reflect? Is that not how it no works? Idea. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Anyway, Ben, they, can you um, tell us about the the mirror that you bought? The Is it not just a film? Just about to Google. How are mirrors made? <laughs> Hot e. Hot elf. <laughs> How are mirrors made? Tell, yeah, tell us about the mirror you bought recently, Ben. Uh, I bought a 1.1 metre circle mirror to go above the fireplace chimney breast. Nice. Read that. The modern mirror is made by silvering or spraying a thin layer of silver or aluminium onto the back of a sheet of glass. So it's not so, by so polishing you, glass. So, so you were right, Dan. Basically, Invented if you rub glass hard enough, it will turn into a mirror. 1835, mate. Can you imagine, seeing the, imagine being seeing the first mirror? Like The only time you, you can ever really see yourself before that is like really still water. In your phone. Yeah. Or in your phone. In your phone. Yeah, but but there's, there's never been a time before that where you could actually get a dedicated reflection of yourself. And then imagine yeah. imagine seeing yourself like in such detail. That'd be crazy. I wonder how good the mirror was back then. Not very good, I can't imagine. Pretty dirty, I bet. I was like, beat, you had to beat a test of mirror. <laughs> beat a test of mirror. Imagine seeing yourself for the first time after never being able to see I yourself. Know, that'd be crazy. Like, you'd look horrific. Yeah. Like you must do. Or you'd look insanely good because you don't know what horrific looks like. And social media didn't exist, so everyone was really fit. Yeah. Because yeah. there was no social standards. There was no perfectionism, yeah. was there? Absolutely none. Cool. Um, Max, have you got any questions yeah. for us? Yes. Yeah, tell, tell us. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Joss. Well, I w- when I first came here, I, sa- I said to Dan and Ben that they should sort of take a minute to kind of appreciate like not appreciate but kind of check where they how far they've come because i was blown away when i walked in there at how much stuff you guys had done and and the scale at which you guys were operating at and when i spoke to you guys about it you were very like disconnected like, oh this yeah this is just this is it like this is this is just what we do and i was like have you guys actually like how does it feel to be in this space how does it feel to have your own podcast to have started through the window podcast and like to have hired another person like, do you ever look back on the days where it was just you two and you were like, how the fuck are we going to do this? Or like, were there any days where, the, where you were like, because I remember so many times me sat in my room thinking, fuck, how am I going to do this? I think the milestones when we started, they were more often and they were like more crazy to think about. Like when we got the Defender, that was mind boggling. And the novelty on that lasted for ages. Whereas now, like we took the van, I, kept, I drove in today, apart next to the van. I was like, that's cool. But like, I don't. Not the excitement, the novelty, and new stuff doesn't last as long. I say now, what really excites me is expanding the team and having other people that I get to spend forty, fifty hours a week with, and like having that relationship. I think that's what really excites me now, and the prospects of landing bigger clients, not necessarily because of the money, because of the work that everyone else gets to do. Mm. That's really cool, and I think like just the idea of building like a. I hate the term that people say building a family, but like building a team yeah. or a crew that we all get on really well and have, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're wasting our life doing this. So we're spending our time on this planet together doing this thing. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's nice to build a team that everyone gets to, everyone's happy to come and do that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Cause we only get to do this once. I think that's cool. But yeah, in terms of like, like when the new cameras came and stuff, like I don't care anymore. Yeah. Like that, that, that side of it's gone. I think it's nice to bring family in and show them the office or, or friends, or like when my parents say they're proud of me, it's awesome, but I don't really, I'm very disconnected to it because I'm always thinking about what's next. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if I'll ever fully appreciate what we have done, not to sound toxic or anything like that. It's just because... There's always more you can do. Yeah, I, I think it's just, I'm always, I'm not to sound like a fucking Gary Vaynerchuk, but I'm just always looking forward, mm. never looking backwards. Mm. And I think like I can... If I do appreciate stuff, it's really quickly. I look back yeah, and think, yeah, oh, yeah. that was crazy. It's more so I think back, like, when I won the Young Optioner of the Year Award, I don't, look, I don't look back and remember winning the award. I remember looking back and having, just remembering how much of a good night it was with Dan and Amber. Like, we just got yeah. so drunk, went for a curry. It was just such a fun night. Mm. That's what I remember. Mm. And I think that is the best way I can describe what this is like. I just remember the really fun, good memories from it rather, yeah, than, yeah. The, rather the, than the actual stuff. Success, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about you, Dan? I think for me, it was always like, you know, when I was growing up and I bought the 1100D with my student loan or whatever, and it was like £300, I was like thinking, bloody hell, is this a, the right choice in spending this £300 on a camera? Mm. 
And then I, I was looking at my hard drive the other day and I've still got like a photo of the receipt and a photo of the camera that I went into the shop and took a photo of my phone and sent it to my mum. I was like, oh, you know, should I buy this? And it was such a nerve wracking time because I was like, shit, I'm about to spend 300 quid on a photo, on a camera. Yeah. And then like, you know, move forward a couple of years and I've just, you know, bought the dream camera I think most photographers would love to have. And I think back then, God, to think I'd spend this much money on a camera, it would never happen. Mm. And I know, I think I kind of like underappreciate all the new equipment we have, but it's nice for me to see that we buy this new equipment and then you guys get stoked off it. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, you know, I get buzzed knowing that we're going to create even better films now yeah, and yeah, the yeah. content we're going to make is going to be even better quality. And, and then like we can sell that to clients and we know when we're putting that towards clients, they're yeah. going to be like, shit, this looks so good. Mm. So yeah, I think like echoing what Ben said about growing the team and becoming bigger and uh, yeah, the the team getting bigger and the quality of work getting better. I think that's so exciting. Mm. Um, I guess office moves are, is really cool to look back. Is that you know Ben and I started you know with video footage of us like sitting in his bedroom, mm. you know back in like um, what was it 2017? Yeah, Kent Rose, we were yeah, there working his bedroom, and then went to desk. And we had like Leah, you know, I left my job, hot desking, and then Ben joined, and then we were like together on a table. And then we went to the other office, and then now we're here. I think office moves gradually because they've always just been yeah. like every lot like, increments. It's been pretty cool, but to yeah, know so cool. yeah, you, the office we have now is really fucking cool. Mm, like the, very, the, the very thing we have access cool. to, and the fact that we can make money off a space is is really 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 sexy i think mm. well, i think especially in creative spaces it's like you spend so much time and so much money and so much energy trying to build the equipment so that you can make what you want to make mm. in this space there is literally like you guys have everything you need to make stuff yeah. to the point where kit or resource is not is is it's literally you have all the tools to do everything and i yeah. think that f- for me at gray sky and for me like freelancing that was always an issue it was like oh, i've got this idea for a film or i've got this idea for this or client comes to you with this idea that they want to do and it's like oh i'm really sorry i can't do that because we need to get this or oh, okay well i've got to factor in rental costs and they're not going to want to pay for rental costs so now we can't do it mm-hmm. whereas there isn't that here because mm-hmm. you've got everything so it's it, it kind of takes the reins off the creativity in that regard it's also um to echo your point dan is like you get really buzzed and excited i've seen you and joss get excited about stuff like joss was <laughs> joss was chasing me like every day last week about the van and like i'd, I'd get messages from him when he's on a shoot he's like is the van arrived what time again what time are you again have you got it yet any update from the guy i'm like jesus christ mate like i didn't even know you know joss <laughs> joss knew more than me at most points but like seeing him how excited he was that made me buzzed for it I was yeah, like, yeah this yeah, is so yeah. cool and like how you got how excited you two got over the c70 yeah when to me that was just like oh it's just it's just an updated version of the c200 i know that's not right but that's just how i think about it it's just another cine camera that's going to be really handy to have and access yeah. to and just look at it from an operational point of view now. Mm. You act like you weren't excited when you didn't, like even though you actually were sat at the window for about 45 minutes with me. We were both equally for panicking about where I the was bloke buzzed, was. I was buzzed, but it quickly dissipates into, okay. It was interesting. Now. We were literally sat at that window for about 45 minutes and then <laughs> ran downstairs, looked at the van and were like, cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's here, yeah. Six seats, perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last question. Do you... My he's, question's gone. He's thinking how to frame it. My question's gone. Come back to me. Come on, Max. Hit us with that. Do you have a question for me, Ben? Uh, what is your inside leg? Uh, inside what is your inside leg, actually? <sighs> well, it kind of fluctuates. <laughs> um, normally a 30... Is it 34? Is is the... No, that's, your, that's your waist, isn't That'll it? That would be insane. Waist is roughly 30, yeah. 34 or 32. Nah, it's a 34, 36. <laughs> <laughs> uh, leg, I usually go regular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, do you, Amber and Hannah? Yeah, how do they feel that you guys spend more time with me than you they, than you do them? I try. I try not. They don't to, know. I try not to um, remind Amber of the fact that I spend more time with like you guys than her, Mister mm. Steelyard. Yeah, yeah, and also like I have said Darren in the past, like you know I spend like way more time with Dan than I do with you, and I think she doesn't care about that. But it's one of them come back and I like chat about Dan for half an hour about stuff <laughs> we've been doing. She's like, oh my God, like you've just spent 50 hours with him. Shut up you about know. him now. I, I, I've always said to Dan, like I reckon we could fully convince our partners that me and Dan are gay for each other. Oh and, yeah. And it wouldn't take you convince mu- me. It wouldn't take much convincing, I don't think. No. And we I could have so. an affair quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> 
if if we wanted to, you know, <laughs> I'll ask for consent, Dan. Obviously, would you be the big or the little spoon? I'd definitely be little spoon. Little spoon. I imagine, the best. I can't. Um, I can. I'm. I'm envious of how safe Hannah feels when you spoon her. <laughs> I, your big arms around her, mate. Is it? Is it still spooning if we're face to face? Because I want to know. Because like, I, that's I a just, disorganized spoon cabinet. I could just, oh, I could just see you like head in my chest hair. <laughs> oh my god! Real cozy. <laughs> No, to go back to your point, Amber, Amber, if you're listening, don't worry, it's not going to happen. To go back to your point, it's only been, I've been here, what, a month? Yeah. Mm. Happy anniversary for the other day, by the way. Um, I've only been here a month, and I think Karis is already, my girlfriend is already getting very annoyed every time I come home from work, and she's like, how was your day? And I was like, oh my God. So today, (laughs) the coffee man came and he drew a penis on my coffee, and it was the (laughs) fucking best thing I've had all week. Um, No, she gets very annoyed about how much I go on about you two and Joss. so I've been having to rein it in a little bit because I just sound like I'm your fucking hype man. That's a sign, it's a sign that we're, we're doing something right because yeah. you're going home and actually enjoying what you're doing. My Instagram it. has been fully taken over by Otter now. And Everyone's unfollowed. I want to put it on the record. Like, we don't ask people to change their name to X from Otter or change their profile photo. Did. Um, we did, yeah. Uh, but it looks really cool, I think, it having does. all four of us with the same name and, and photo. I think it looks... I, I don't know. You can never enforce that. So when we bring other people on, I hope they take it up. If they don't, it's fine. But I hope they do. Cause I think it, they should. It looks mint. I think that's they, should. I think really they definitely should. Like, if you care that much, then have a second profile. Oh, yeah, but I'd rather just someone have it as their, you know. No, but like, change your, your, your photography or video one to X from Otter. And then have, if you really want to have a separate one, then make a separate account. I don't want to take people's identities away from them, though, and make them part of a... Make them do something on their socials or their outward image that they don't want to. I, I'll, I'll encourage them to do it. You're too nice. Well, but that's but that's our aim. I think that's always been our aim is to build a brand that people want to work for. Yeah, yeah. and want to do it. Said, well, I think you've done that because yeah. there was not even a question for me when like, when you or one of you said um, about continuing freelancing. I was like, no, I, w- I want to be invested in the company enough so that I don't even think about freelancing ever again. Mm. Like that's the goal. Mm. Um, and I think you guys have made a a, a place that people would want to come and be this is the so. most fun i've had in the job by far mm. and it's definitely yeah, the, most, too. It's the most freedom but we still get a load of shit done so yeah i mean that, that that's always comes first as long as the work gets done we can do whatever we want really that's the the joy of running a company in the 21st century it doesn't have to be all corporate bells and whistles and processes and yeah. you know making stuff the way it is it can it's completely up to what us for design it and you know you say like it's really cool what me and dan are doing have done but it's like it's not me and dan anymore it's you mm-hmm. and joss and us it's all four of us together you're 25 percent of the, of the company now and you can influence it just as much as me or dan can which I'm is which is really that. fucking cool mm-hmm. you know so everyone can make it their own in a way mm. there we go 25 percent of the company yeah come on i'm gonna take it down <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> My dad's a bouncer, and, and we've got a NAS system. So yeah, try. My dad works for Xbox. So Good luck taking the NAS you. down, mate. <laughs> NAS self destruct. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it does look fucking scary up there on the wall. I don't want to go near it. When you said, oh, the internet's gone down, I was like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you just, you're coming one day and I'm just like rubbing cocoa butter into the NAS. Yeah. Like, good girl, you've been working so hard this week. But it's when the internet down, I was kind of looking at it and all the buttons and like the lights were going off and I was like, oh my God. And you were like, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> You great just system like, you just see Ben stand on a chair you sounded so alpha that you stood <laughs> on a chair to reach it <laughs> I gotta get on tiptoes my girl you know come on um, right we end it there should we end it there yeah Max where can people find you they can find me on Instagram at M-H Barham B-A-R-E-H-A-M and or type in Max from Otter and I will hopefully pop up nice um, or you can find me at Otter Works because I'm on there at some point and also on YouTube, Otter Works. Love it. Thank and you'll you. be seeing me again very soon in every vlog, hopefully for the next few weeks until I fail probation. Come on. Come on. Come Cut on. 60. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, nice. Cool. Cut. Cut.